All right, so um, has anyone memorized the um, historical paleontology? <laughs> I don't either, to be honest. Um, but we're going to um, outline the major time periods. So it, you've got eons and epochs and periods and all these different uh, ranges of time. Uh, and we've, we're able to contribute or attribute different fossils depending on where they fit in geo, um, geologically and geographically. Um, anyway, it gets very complicated. We're just going to stick to the major time periods that apply to mammals, okay? So, um, oops. So, the, the periods, um, we're going to look at when these evolved, all right? So, the animals... Um, animals first evolved in the Eticarian time period. Um, but they didn't diversify or radiate uh, until the next time period. Um, do you remember what that... This is a very significant time period, often referred to as uh, an explosion. Good, yeah, so the chordates occurred uh, as one of the phyla that evolved during that time. So the Cambrian period is where we get chordates. Okay, and then um, amniotes are a type of chordate, okay? And I'm going to have to check and make sure I'm on the right... But I think at this point we have, we get a few time periods that are named after states, or I don't know what was for, named first, the state or the time period. But uh, the first one, amniotes, is in the Mississippian. Who named this? Who knew it was that? I don't know. Maybe it's because they found the fossils in Mississippi. I don't know. But yeah, so amniotes are in the Mississippian, M-I-S-S-I, S-S-I, P-P-I-A-N. All right, and then the synapsids were found in the Pennsylvanian. Okay, therapsids were found first, and the cynodonts second, but they were both found in the same time period, which is the Permian. And then mammals finally came onto the scene in the Triassic. Which predates the Jurassic. So Jurassic is the next one. Um, and then there were m many different mammalian groups which diversified and then went extinct. Um, and then the radiation of placental and uh, marsupial uh, mammals uh, then occurred in the Pliocene. No, the Pleo, sorry, put this wrong. The Paleogene. Which is part of, or then within that, a different type of time period called an epoch. The Paleocene. which is a smaller geological time period. Okay, um, Dates on these then, uh, if you look, you're looking at millions of years ago, the Eticarian biota was around 700. 
the Cambrian, 541. Uh, Mississippian, 359. Pennsylvanian, 323. Uh, the Permian was 299. Triassic, 252. And then the Paleogene and Paleocene were 66. Okay, so most of our extant um, orders of, of mammals um, occurred from 66 to the next time period up, 56 million years ago. Okay, but you had mammals before this, like I said, I mentioned before this, which diversified and actually filled a lot of these niches and then eventually they all went extinct and then the placental and um, marsupial mammals radiated. All right, so what events in natural history coincided with this radiation and diversity? How come mammals didn't radiate or evolve sooner? Because there are intervals that were slower than this. Is true. Yeah. Dinosaurs and then mammals have gotten bigger as they would evolve and eaten. Yeah, and so they were probably predators for a long time. So then what happened? to allow that radiation if there were always mammals there or there were always animals. Right, so the dinosaurs went extinct. And that opened up a lot of, uh, of niches that were then available. Okay, what are, what are other events that contributed to our modern, very diverse group of animals. A couple more mentioned in the video lecture. What was happening to the land masses? Yes, right? So the land masses separated. So you have uh, Gondwana land, Pangaea, which um, was kind of you know a conglomerate of all our continents stuck together, and then they started to diverge, and now there's oceans between them, and that allows then, um, well first you get a diversity now of different biogeographies. When they're all stuck together, they're all kind of in the same place. So they're all experiencing similar climate. Once you start splitting them up and moving them to different directions, then you're allowing different evolutionary forces to take place. So, um, so these continents then started to drift apart. Um, Let's just actually say continental drift. All right, what else? There's one other thing. Yes, good. So you have angiosperms, which are also diversifying at this uh, at this point, um, and why is that significant? What are angiosperms? Right, so flowering plants. Before that, you had gymnosperms as the dominant um, land plants or trees, which are you know our pine trees, um, but they don't offer as much nutritionally as angiosperms with, with flowers and fruit. Um, and what else? Kind of secondary to flowers and fruit. What do flowers depend on for reproduction? Yes, so 
the things that eat the flowers and the fruit or you know, have a relationship with them, those are now available prey items as well. So, Okay, so this is kind of a perfect storm then. Uh, dinosaurs extinct, now there's lots of resources available. Um, the land masses are separating, so there's different conditions in different areas. And you have an abundant available food source that wasn't there before. Um, okay, good. All right, so um, if we were going to draw what we did before in our list there, but now in a clade, um, let's start with the clade of amniotes. Okay, so what's an amniote? What is their defining characteristic? An egg. Mm-hmm. Right, so an amniotic egg has a shell. Okay, what is previous? So if you think of amphibians lay their eggs, their eggs don't have shells. Um, and so they're dependent on water or moist environment to stay, um, you know, to keep them drying out. Um, but the shell then now allows moisture to be retained inside. So now you don't have to lay your eggs in water or lay your ace, eggs under a leaf. You can lay it anywhere, in the sand, on the tree, whatever. Um, and then within that egg, uh, that egg is allowed to exchange oxygen carbon dioxide with the environment. It has a yolk, a nutrition um, source for the developing uh, embryo. Um, and allows then you to not be tied to water. Okay. All right, so amniotes, uh, what are some examples of amniotes? Okay, alligators, yeah. Uh, mammals, okay. Um, and amniotes split into a couple different kinds depending on their skull type was the first way we're going to div divide them. Um, we had synapsids. And then we had anapsids and diapsids. And there are lots of different groups within there, but what are modern day synapsids? These are eventually are become our mammals, right? What's a modern day anapsid? Okay, our turtles, yeah. And then diapsid, all the other reptiles, so snakes and lizards. Um, and the prefix di, an, or sin refers to the, the hole in the um, temporal bone. So I have a bunch of skulls here. So here's a rabbit skull. Okay, so an anapsid, if you look at an anapsid skull, this is a very rough drawing. Uh, they don't have any teeth. Okay, but they have a hole here for the eye. 
And that's it. Okay, there's no other holes in their skull. Okay, a diapsid is going to have that hole for the eye and then two holes in the back. And these are called uh, temporal fenestra. Okay, fenestra means hole. And temporal is referring to that region in the skull, the bone, the temporal bone. That's a horrible anapsid skull. But. All right, so synapsid, that's what you guys all have. It's skull, you can have one for the eye. And then those two holes are synthesized into one hole. So they could have said unapsid, I guess, but synapsid. All right, so see if you can find the temporal fenestra in the skull that you have. You take the dentary bone out of it. No, that's it here now. It's kind of hard. Temporal fenestra. Okay, so you've seen some of them are quite modified where the bones separating the, eye, the orbit from the temporal fenestra have been reduced or lost, and so it just makes one giant hole. Other ones, there is a complete separation, right? See on the cat, it also has just the orbit just barely doesn't meet anymore. You can see the two holes there. But that then is one way to, if you find a skull in the woods, to determine if it's a reptile or a actually. So it's hard with diapsids, especially in things like. Uh, snakes or do we have a bullfrog? Pass that down. So the big hole is the is the orbit, and it's supposed to have two temporal fenestra, but it's just so highly modified that you can't really see where the where they are. You want to look at it. And that's a bullfrog. Uh, snakes, especially, they have very mobile, you know, their skulls are very kinetic, meaning they can uh, move their jaw around so they can swallow stuff. So those holes aren't as well defined, and their bones aren't as massive either. It would be more like an alligator? Yeah, so an alligator you could see it very well. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> um, all right, so we have our synapsids. And then in the, so you have a bunch of synapsids um, that, a bunch of different groups, all went extinct. And then you had therapsids and cynodonts. Um, and therapsids and cynodonts, so the synapsids were mostly reptile-like in their appearance. 
and in their characteristics, other than that skull difference. Um, the therapsids and the cynodonts, however, they started to have a lot of the mammalian characteristics. Um, so, uh, including uh, a reduction in jaw bones, So reptiles have three bones in their jaw, mammals have one. The therapsids still had through those three bones, but they started to reduce and move further back, and the dentary bone became more prominent. Um, uh, you also had the formation of the zygomatic arch, which you can see on those. Okay, a reduction in in the lumbar ribs. And so these are the lumbar vertebrae you see on the cat here. Um, in mammals, you only have vertebrae, or you only have ribs on the thoracic vertebrae. But in other tetrapod species, you'll have ribs on this part as well. So reduction in the lumbar ribs also seem to coincide with the development of the muscle at the bottom of the thoracic cavity, which is, helps for breathing. So what, what was that muscle? Diaphragm. Yeah, so diaphragm. And you could put that in there, although it's hard to determine. Diaphragm is a soft tissue, so it doesn't really show up in the um, fossil record. We can identify like a characteristics, characteristics like that, which may have coincided with the diaphragm, but we don't know exactly when it, when it occurred. And then, yeah, there's a number of other characteristics, um, which we mentioned in your video lecture as well. All right, and then finally, within the cytodonts, you have um, the mammaliformes originating within there. And what was the defining characteristics, the defining characteristic of mammaliformes? We've mentioned it before. The joint between the jaws. Right. All right. So the dentary squamosal joint. Okay, so where did those other two bones, so there were three bones in the jaw and the reptile, where did those other two bones go? Right, so with the dentary squamosal joint, you have three inner ear bones. Okay, and you also have the formation of what's called the tympanic bulla. Okay, if you want to turn your mammal skull upside down, you can find the tympanic bulla. You should be able to see the ear hole on the side there. The tympanic bulla is that raised kind of bulbous portion there. And that's the resonating chamber for your ear. So for sound to bounce off and make those ear, those, um, bones um, vibrate. So that's where the inner ear bones, you can't see the inner ear bones um, in any of these. They fell out, but they would be in the tympanic bulla. All right, so other, so some other ones we'll just throw on the therapsid and cynodont line. Um, heterothermy, Probably uh, evolved within the therapsid and cynodonts. We just don't know when. Uh, mammary glands. Probably in there somewhere, but we don't know when. So there's some soft tissue characteristics.
Okay, any questions about that? Okay, so you should be able to go from amniotes to mammiliformes and know the different groups within there, just like we did there. We don't have to know the lump on the ones? No, so we won't go over all the extinct ones that are that didn't end up becoming modern day mammals. Okay. Okay, that's it. Did I miss?